Guten Tag everyone, my name is Jesper Ben Vamon Kunz and with me today I have Daniel Daniel Bain Daniel and in this video I will be interviewing Alan Daniel Bain Daniel in order for everyone to learn a little bit more about Daniel Daniel Bain sorry Alan Daniel Bain Daniel <laughs> I'm sorry uh, man you have a nice name <laughs> thank you it's uh so. My name is Alan Daniel. I go mm. as the Twitter handle Daniel Bain GG. Uh, I have been shoutcasting for almost a year. Mm -hmm. uh, League of Legends for an amateur company. Uh, I have a background in coaching before. I even started casting uh, League of Legends. I'm fairly physically active i play rugby i've played played i played rugby for most of my life mm -hmm. uh many other sports basketball football i wasn't really that good at football to be honest uh, otherwise i don't really feel yeah that's all i'm a hard worker and i <laughs> love to get new knowledge okay so which role do you fulfill in the broadcast daniel I fulfill both of uh, the role of a play-by-play -play caster and a shoutcaster. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, do you mean like role as in like what exactly are, are, are you, Well, are you a caller or are you a play-by-play? -play? Are you a producer? Both. Stuff like that. Okay, so you're both. Both, both, both. yeah. Okay, so, well, which games do you cast? Is it only League of Legends or...? Uh, I cast anything, to be honest. <laughs> I... I've Slice. currently casted CSGO, Hearthstone, League of Legends. Mm -hmm. uh, the only games that are currently relevant, even though I've tried Overwatch, didn't really look out due to the complicated spectating uh, process. Uh, I, the only game that is currently in, I would say, uh, in consideration. In consideration is Dota. Otherwise, I mm. I can cast practically every other game. Okay, so. What's the favorite things about the games that you cast? Uh, like, I, I know you just mentioned a lot of games, so there must be a lot of favorite things. Well, it, it depends on the game. Usually it's uh, teamwork, mm -hmm. having to work with random strangers or friends, depending on whether you are social or not. Uh, mm -hmm. Overall, I like the entire concept of being able to compete on a global scale from your computer and I'm just giving an example here in your parents basement I do not live in my <laughs> parents basement though so it was an abstract example yeah the competition and now I everybody is... believes that you live in your parents basement dude <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to explain yeah <laughs> you just ruined it for yourself pretty much <laughs> well so What's your favorite thing about being a commentator? Do you like storytelling, I, I, or do you like to flame I've at people? Been... Are you toxic like Doctor? <laughs> no, um, I've always been good at telling stories, and I know. Uh, my parents said uh, actually I have a problem with uh, being the center of attention. So my mom might have slightly something to do with that, but no, I just like shoutcasting as a way to express myself. I've always been very talkative, mm -hmm. and it's something that I feel very passionate about. Okay, so that's definitely awesome. I mean, a lot of people probably feel passionate about shoutcasting, and I know that there are quite a lot of us. So, with that in mind, we are talking about you. What is your greatest professional achievement? What has made you stand out to the guys that are also trying to get gigs left, right, and center all the time? Mm. I have booked a gig for a local LAN. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't say I have that many achievements. Um, consistently casting for Compete League, uh, an amateur league. Otherwise, I don't really say. I think... It's my greatest <laughs> achievement might be this year. So yeah, I I don't have anything yet to to, to brag about. To brag about. I I'm hungry, you know. I yeah. 
I'm willing. I'm going in. <laughs> I'm scrappy. You have the eye of the tiger. Yes. <laughs> so, well, what is your, well, at least what do you feel is your strengths and weaknesses? Oof. I think my strength is also my weakness because I tend mm-hmm. to be able, I, I bring a very lighthearted uh, broadcasting gale most of the time. But I'm very emotional. I feel like sometimes I'm not able to put aside some some personal problems I've been having and it keeps on affecting me during the broadcast and it tends to mess up my flow, mess up mm. my analysis. I'm a bit harsher. Um, but then again, it also, if I'm having a good day, I just go off. So it's it works both ways. It's something I'm really trying to work on. Okay, so... Is is that all, or do you feel like you have more strengths? Perhaps something that isn't your weakness as well, or do do you, are are you good at being a hype play by play or caller for that matter? Mm. I'd say I'm I am quite good at being bringing the hype. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel again I come in. I'm really good when it comes to comic relief. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you I'm, are. I, I I I can approve of that. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'm really good at keeping the cast lighthearted and at entertaining people, entertainment. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's definitely a strength that a lot of people uh, definitely look up to. And now I must ask you, which qualities do you look for in a co-caster? What makes you have a lot of good synergy with your co-caster? In order to make a good broadcast, of course. Hmm... That's a tough one. Uh, I'd say there's got to be that initial chemistry. Mm-hmm. Uh, there needs to be something. You can't just, you can't, you need to be on the same page. If you're not on the same page, you you don't really have what to build off. Then it really comes down to uh, the right uh, amount of being, uh, being in control. I don't want to cast a dat uh, every single time I interrupt. He will wait and just let me finish every single point I'm making and then just keep on waiting. It makes for very bad broadcasting because there's this huge pause between our discussion. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I don't want someone who's too headstrong. Again, uh, someone who keeps on talking over and just completely cuts me off. There's a fine line. So, yeah, I'd say just lots of synergy, lots of chemistry with my co-caster. Otherwise, just being a funny person, someone I can get along <laughs> with in real life. Okay. I don't think I'll be able to cast with someone who I do not like as a person. Mm. Okay, well, that's fair enough. And with that in mind, which guy do you look up to the most in terms of casting? Who is your favorite caster and who gives you the inspiration you need in order to improve as a commentator yourself? When it comes to color casting, I would say, uh, uh, actually Monte Cristo mm-hmm. and Doa are actually my two favorite casters. Uh, the, the, the pair deal, I've been watching them in League and now I'm watching them in Overwatch. Uh, when I try to play by play, I try to, uh, not sound like Doa, try to, Take what I think he's doing good, and put it in my own, uh, in my own way. Mm-hmm. Whereas Monte Cristo, I just look up to him as a color cast. I looked up to his experience. I look up to him as a person. So yeah. Okay. And then is that also the place that you go to when you need some inspiration? Is it to the OGN casters, or do you perhaps look more to NALCS casters, or even LPL or OPL? I actually uh, respect a lot the EU casters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deficio is a great example of a perseverance. Uh, initially, he was not received that well by the community. <laughs> That's and true. And now he got, uh, he ended up being one of the more loved casters of the EU LCS. So yeah, I really look, I respect Deficio's motivation. Uh, I, he, yeah, he's, he's, he's also, again, He's, he's up there when it comes to role models and uh, inspirations. Okay, so 
Do you also see yourself casting uh, besides the Fischio, or is it Doa and Monte Cristo in five years? Where do you see yourself the, in five years' time? Um, in five years' time, I would most likely would ideally have my own. Uh, not necessarily. I don't. I wouldn't mind, but I would prefer to cast in a new group with someone I don't because I don't I don't want there's this quote never meet your heroes mm. and so I don't want to I would prefer not to cast ideally I'd prefer not to cast with anyone that I look up to I'd prefer to cast with someone that is on the same level as me I wouldn't want to be completely overwhelmed by let's say casting with someone like Deficio and then just a sheer amount of experience i will never be able to match up with this yes it has the advantages but i think long term in five years Mm -hmm. it would be better for me to be working with someone who is not as who doesn't have the prestige Mm -hmm. of someone like doa monte cristo uh, deficio crepo so could it perhaps be that you want to be working on a new esports title? You perhaps you don't want to work on League of Legends, so that you can like create your own brand, perhaps? Honestly, I don't know. I mm-hmm. I feel like it will come down to because I mean, let's get an example here would be Monte Cristo and Doha. They're not casting League of Legends anymore. They're casting Overwatch. Yeah. So. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if League of Legends will still be a thing in ten, in five years. Uh, hopefully, it is because you know I, uh, it's it's kind of fun. Uh, so honestly, I just feel like I I don't feel like I need to create my own shtick. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like I necessarily want to be oh some innovator some explorer you don't I, want to be Dora the explorer <laughs> i do not want to be Dora the explorer i yeah i don't i don't really need i would prefer in this case to follow in someone's footsteps mm-hmm. uh not necessarily so probably something like an overwatch league of legends hearthstone CSGO would be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. And is your dream job to become a shoutcaster? Is it that uh, that you're... Well, is it what you're dreaming of? Or perhaps you want to well, be something else? I I don't really have dreams. But uh, <laughs> if it were to be a dream job, I think being a shoutcaster is... Yeah, I, I would say it's my dream job. Uh, it's... it's what I would really, really give my all to. It's mm-hmm. something that I could actually feel dedicated to because it's not, you're not doing it for yourself. You're not working, you're entertaining. And I feel like I was always bound to end up in one way or the other to the entertainment industry. Uh, somehow, I feel like I will end up there. Oh, magic tricks I've been doing for a while. <laughs> uh, a bunch. I know. I just feel like making people happy is something that makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I see the point you're making, and it's totally understandable, Daniel. I can. I. I, I understand where you're going to, and I understand what you're going from because it's definitely something that people enjoy doing in terms of casting, like being that storyteller. Um, and that is also something that you mentioned being a storyteller is something that you enjoy quite as, a lot as well but now I have to ask you what is the best advice at, at, the best advice that you have ever been given in general or casting related it, casting related casting related um, mm-hmm. have fun have fun. Have fun. And, and why is that? Well, because the first time I actually ever casted, um, before my... Uh, okay, so l- l- let's go off on a tangent, the storyteller here. First <laughs> time I ever applied for a casting position online, mm-hmm. uh, 
my hands were shaking, <laughs> my computer was dead, so I had to run to the local internet cafe yeah. to cast air. So I was in a noisy internet cafe going for a tryout. Yeah. And then at some point in the middle of the cast, we were casting I Know What Vod, some guy falls and you hear this whap. And then me and my co cast are just start laughing. And the, the inspector, it was, it, was, it was crazy, yeah. So, um, so just having fun. Have fun. I was, I, and then again, uh, that, okay, that was a tangent. But the first time I broadcasted, uh, at a LAN event, my hands were shaking. I could not sit down. Um, mm-hmm. Again, second time I did it online, again, hands, hands were shaking. I had so much emotions. I, I was focused too much on being a good caster and not on having fun that I, I ended up not achieving either of those. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's definitely a... In uh, my a- opinion. It's a good tip, man. It's definitely a very good advice that you have just shared to the world. And now I have to ask you to share yet another one. What is your best tip for an as- an aspiring shoutcaster? Do it. Do it. Just do it? Do it. Just do it. Make your dreams be dreams. No. Uh, <laughs> I think you, just... you I think you said it the wrong way. Make your dreams be dreams. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, it's, it's a joke. Uh, but... <laughs> I feel like if you actually, if it's something you're looking to do in your life, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like literally everything else. If I want to be a bodybuilder, I'm going to go to the gym, do a lot of steroids and work out. Sorry, what? Uh, Work out. (laughs) Yeah. If I want to be a professional football player, I'm going to kick that ball like for 10 days until it breaks on my foot. Uh, If I want to be a professional athlete i'm gonna run a lot you need to cast a lot it'll take you a lot of time nobody is perfect and so just the longer you do it the better it is for you Mm -hmm. good tip man and well what's your best tip for an established caster then am i in the position to give them tips um listen don't take it uh too much don't take too much flack from the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are lots of people who uh, they take all this criticism for the, from the community and they just end up uh, moving to LPL. Um, <laughs> there was actually an NA caster that did that recently. Uh, uh, Pulse, Sat- I think. Or no, it, it was Sata. Saticus. Sat- I don't remember. Who uh, I, I think um, Sata used to cast for NA for like a little bit of time then he moved back to the, to, um, the LPL. And Pauls yeah. as well moved from EU to LPL and OPL. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they, they took the criticism. It was something to do with criticism. Yeah, that's probably Pauls then. Yeah, I, I feel like you really shouldn't take it to heart. Like, mm-hmm. Re- Reddit doesn't know anything. Re- Reddit tends to be wrong a lot. <laughs> so, Reddit, yeah, just... Reddit tends to whine and give quite a lot of flack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And well, even when it's stuff they wanted, like Flex Q <laughs> was like requested all the time until they actually got it. When mm. they got it, they were like, but Mach Solo Duo Q. It's like, <laughs> okay, anyways. Reddit, Reddit is never really right. Don't look, conclusion, never listen to Reddit. <laughs> Good unless advice is with the uh, uh, No, unless it's compliments. Mm-hmm. If they're boosting your ego, then yes, listen to Reddit. <laughs> but don't do it blindly. Never do it blindly. Never do yes. it blindly. So it's always more important to let's say if I get uh, an example was uh, I got actually at some point some flack on Reddit mm-hmm. uh, for being a bit too harsh, uh, and again I had uh, it really it really was demotivating to be honest. Uh, I, it was kind of the, oh, I, I laugh it off, but I cry inside type of stuff <laughs> where you're like, <laughs> but at the end, I just had people around me who were like, yeah, do it. You know, you're doing good. Mm-hmm. Uh, people who said, you know, you're, you're actually good at this. So it was, it was this net of people that kind of stopped yeah. me from quitting. 
Okay, well, it, it, it's always good to have people around you that will help you and support you. So I guess that's what happened for you as well. Yeah. Okay, so now which game have uh <laughs> have a have social a network match. man have a social yeah. network and always talk to the guys that you enjoy talking to so which game of uh, league of legends in terms of uh, best of series has been the ever the, the best that you have ever seen and why <laughs> yeah it's a hard one yeah, because, like, I could say something now and just, like, end up triggering whoever's watching this. <laughs> I could say, like, mm, the best of League of, series of League of Legends. Well, uh, SKT versus Rocks semifinals. Last year. This world. Yeah. Last year, last year, yeah. Okay. And why? It was just an insane game. But 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 why was it an insane game? Because I mean, like, high level Rock of skill. They stomped game two. Yeah, it was just high level of skill. It was just the intensity of it. Mm -hmm. I was. It, it left the largest mark on me. It was. I was actually at a pub with some people, so I was. I was also in the mood to like celebrate, and uh, it was. It was truly mm -hmm. a remarkable experience yeah. being... And it was also a very, very good series. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, which game of best of series, or single games, of course, has uh, been your favorite game to ever cast? And why is that? Oh, uh, I think it was... This was act, This is actually local. Mm -hmm. X-Peche uh, versus... <laughs> Uh, TBQ or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the no uh, TBR. Uh, Xpeche is the Romanian powerhouse when it comes to League of Legends teams. Uh, they actually had uh, what's the jungle for your well? Uh, so say. Uh, Cersei. Uh, Cersei as... I don't remember. I, I did he support a jungle. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I'm not 100%. But he played for them for like the longest period. And um, he actually... Uh, I have an entire story with him, but that, that's that's for some other point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they played against what was practically my team. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, well, my team, as in I had to, I was casting the event, my team, I was partially coach, partially uh, playing top lane back then. Yeah, and nice yeah, I, I used to play, I used to play top lane. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I know you hate <laughs> me now. Uh, uh, and I decided to drop the team for uh, the casting opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the series was really good. Um, my team did end up losing, and I, I was with them, emo with them emotionally. Uh, but yeah, that, that was the best for me because I felt like the emotional high I got off watching my team take a game off the <laughs> like the, the these guys were the big boys. Okay, yeah, these guys were like big boys with sponsorships. They come in with like three golfers each, <laughs> like uh, it, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and we were like a bunch of like, well, uh, we had like one guy who was okay, like diamond. No, <laughs> one was diamond, one was challenger, two masters, and then like me and like a few other diamonds. One was diamond one though, the first diamond I mentioned. And so, like, they were all good, but, like, the other team were, like, a polished machine compared to us. <laughs> and when, when I say he was challenger, mm -hmm. I meant, like, he, he, he maxed out at challenger and then, like, went and just, like, tilted into, like, so, some ridiculous elo. The guy was a massive tilter. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that, that was the emotional high I got of watching my team take a game off. The best team in Romania was insane. Okay. Um, and as we are reaching the end of the interview, I have to ask you, and I do this with every guy that I interview, what's your favorite movie 
and why? Oh. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, it's a hard one. I mean, like people always tilt when I ask them this question. Yeah, I know. It's it's oof. This is this is a curveball. I'm gonna say Fight Club, actually. Mm-hmm. And I, I know it sounds yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm getting into it. I'm a little calm down. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hands off. I'm I'm calm and relaxed now. Yeah. Uh, you had your coffee. Um, I I feel <laughs> like it just not necessarily for the meaning. Uh, uh I like it as a movie. I think the plot twist. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, at this point, I'm like, do, do I spoil? Yeah, just go ahead and spoil. I mean, like, it's a, it, it's a fairly old movie. Like, people it's, should have it, seen it. You should. You should. You have no yeah. explanation. Practically, it's it's brilliant because the twist is that it's actually him that he's trying to stop. Yeah. It's like, it's Fucking in his head. It, it's insane. And it just shows, like, a bunch of... The imagery is really nice. It's it's a really like psychological film. Mm-hmm. Uh, or it would be yeah, that would be most likely it. Okay. Or like something like Naked Lunch that you just keep on watching, <laughs> and every single time you like, oh wait a second. <laughs> so yeah, but Fight Club. I'm gonna say Fight Club okay. because you know everyone loves it. Okay, so we have reached the end, man. Uh, is there anything you'd like to add? In the end, perhaps you want to tell that story that you were talking about. Oh, the the yeah. So uh, uh, this this is this is story time. This was we have Eastern European Comic Con, which is actually hosted in Romania. Mm-hmm. And I end up going there. I try to actually get some sort of gig there as like presenting. You know, uh, maybe. Just give me a microphone, set me on one of those stands, and let me just say stuff. Uh, no, apparently they all wanted someone with uh, someone older than me or with more experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and partially because my Romanian sound is very... It, it's, I have a peculiar accent in Romanian <laughs> for some reason. Uh, yeah, I have an accent in any language I speak. It's 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 weird. I have no no language that I can speak in its own accent. Uh, so, yeah. And I ended up going there with my friends. And uh, I talked with one of my friends. There was this sort of... Um, they would put your name in, in like this sort of lottery. And they would draw it out. And they would have you play a 1v1 versus... Uh, I th- It was Xpeche, the entire team. Mm-hmm. And, like, you would 1v1 on AOM, one of them. And if you win... Uh, you get, like, some headset and, like, some swag, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And I talked to one of my friends uh, who was, like, organizing the thing. And he's like, yo, you want me to draw out your name? And I was like, yeah, you know, why not? And so, of course, he, he palmed uh, a piece of paper with my name on it. Like, oh, uh, Alan. And so I go in there and I see these five guys. And these five guys already beat my team. This is like after. <laughs> and so I'm like, hmm. And I see, uh, Xe- I-, I keep on forgetting his name. Xer. Xerse? Xerse. Uh, <laughs> and I see him and he looks, he looks like the nicest guy. Okay. <laughs> he, he looks so much nicer than all of his teammates. Mm. Look up Xpeche, team roster. All of them look mean. And Xer... <laughs> Is like, oh, so nice. Yeah, so I go and I end up 1v1ing him. Mm-hmm. And you lost. I lose. I lose. The guy cheeses me with Morgana. <laughs> he goes for the silly Dawn's wing. Like, you buy like four Dawn's wings, just max W, put that thing down bottom lane, uh, sorry, mid lane, and just clear out the wave. The guy cheeses me. And yeah, I end up losing. Unfortunate, never lucky. <laughs> oh, and one other. If we're talking about my encounters with the two Romanians in League of Legends, which is the other one is Odomne. Yeah. Uh, Odomne, I actually met back when he was playing for Cloud9 Ellipson, and I was I was kind of um. I wasn't as familiar with League of Legends back then, more with the professional scene. Mm-hmm. And so 
uh, one of my friends who was like a huge fan of League of Legends. Uh, this was back way, let me say, when it was like right, right after the first SKT World Championship. Yeah, so back in sometime around there. 2013. Wait. Yeah, some sometime it was it was a bit back. Like, oh, Dominic probably doesn't even remember it, but th- this stuck in my memory. And so you know, and we, uh, my friend points him out, and he's like, "Yo, this guy is for Cloud Nine Ellipson," and he mentioned before Cloud Nine, uh, and the only person I remembered from Cloud Nine was Balls, because I mean, yeah, and yeah. so at some point, and so. Uh, I go down, I'm talking with him, you know, and at some point I'm like, so how's balls? <laughs> and then I just realized, like, how it sounded, and we all burst into laughter. <laughs> yeah. And I actually took a photo with him, uh, sorry, I took a photo with him, mm. but somehow it got deleted. Otherwise, this would be probably my profile picture now. <laughs> actually, it's it's way back, so it'd be like a throwback at some point. Okay. Uh, yeah, so... That's and ever since then, I actually started following Odomne. Mm-hmm. He seemed like a really cool guy. He was really down to earth back then. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I haven't seen him recently, so yeah, uh, yeah. And so ever since then, H2K for the win. <laughs> That's really nice, man. So well, that does conclude the interview. So remember, guys, you can uh, find both of us over on Facebook. Well, at least you can find me on Facebook. You can find us both on uh, Twitter. Uh, And remember to subscribe here on YouTube if you want to see more. And with that being said, say goodbye, Daniel. Goodbye. Cheers.